Hello everyone and welcome back to What's What, your very own show about electricity. Today, I have a few questions for you. Where do you watch our channel? On your phone? Your portable computers? Your tablet? Speaking of which, do you ever wonder how these electronic devices store energy? That's right, it's simple, with their batteries. But I got a few harder questions. How is industrial energy stored? More specifically, how exactly do we store quantities of energy to power a whole grid while compensating for intermittent renewable electricity? That's a question we are going to answer today. But before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe below. When looking at energy storage on an industrial level, the first factor is availability. The reality is electricity is very difficult to be stored. Well, at least at a reasonable cost. And with many countries fighting toward a low carbon economy, the demand to store intermittent energy will only increase. The bottom line, we have to get our power from somewhere. It has to be available, always. But how it becomes available relies on many principles and applications. Electricity storage has evolved immensely since the invention of the battery by Alessandro Volta in 1799. Today, we have more and more huge battery energy storage systems, also known as BESS. These stations can store energy from various sources and disperse energy whenever needed. The largest site to date is the Vistra Moss Landing Energy Storage Facility located in California, USA. It was built on the grounds of the almost landing power plant. There are other sites like this across California and even the globe. And their metrics really matter. When it comes to performance, there are a series of needs we will have to fulfill regardless of size. The first aspect that comes into play is watt hours. This is a standard and most well-known function and measurement of a battery. And its capacity is usually measured in kilowatts, megawatts or gigawatts per hour. Then there is energy density or how much energy a battery contains in relevance to its size. Obviously, the higher the energy density, the better, as we want to lower the size of our batteries and get more power for our punch. Next comes battery rate, which is the rate at which energy is pushed through the battery. Rate is important to fit your electrical equipment's power needs. Some objects require powerful bursts of energy, like, say, a power tool whereas others need a more steady and mellow flow. Then there is cycle life, which is how many charges a battery can take before its capacity value lowers and in result lowers performance. This is not to be confused with calendar life, which measures the overall degradation of the battery or in simple terms, a battery's lifespan. And then there is charge speed. Like they say, time is money. And let's be honest, no one wants to sit around waiting for their cell or car to charge. We want the fastest possible rate, but we also must be careful not to shoot so much energy into our object that the battery is damaged. Swell rate also comes into play, and this is a huge challenge for lithium-ion batteries. Some of you may have laptops and notice that after time, the mouse pad stops functioning. Often, this is not due to the mousepad itself, but it is caused by the swelling of the computer's battery, which is located directly under the mousepad. So you see, whenever a battery grows, it pushes other mechanics out of place and disrupts functionality. In the power grid, it is essential to convert energy that is near impossible to store to easier or more economically storable forms. Some energy can be stored for short amounts of time, whereas others can be stored for long durations. But overall, grid energy storage holds a collection of methods to store energy on a large scale. 
One example of larger energy storage are hydroelectric dams, which store energy as water in reservoirs. More recently, we have seen various hydrogen storage solutions that use electrolysis to store gas and generate electricity within a fuel cell. For those who don't know, electrolysis is the process of passing electrical current through a given substance to create chemical change. But even with such innovations, there are still some drawbacks when it comes to energy storage. Like any aspect of energy, storage has its consequences. The two most challenging obstacles to overcome are the limitation of raw material depletion and the capacity to extensively recycle materials. But with scientists testing the limits of consumption every day, a solution doesn't seem too far from reach. To sum up, energy storage boils down to the need for available energy. Some forms of energy are harder to store than others. BESS are a great solution for our renewable energy needs. Energy density, battery rate, cycle life, calendar life, charge speed, and swell rate are all considered in battery innovation and construction. For larger energy storage, it is necessary to convert energy into its easiest storable form. That wraps it up today for us at What's What. Have any questions? Feel free to leave a comment below. And remember, wherever you go, energy is near. <laughs>